2016, a Krakow Dorsey family were given a trailer by a neighbor they'd only just met. This family had recently escaped from the Essex Thames gateway to rural Shropshire. Today, they survive on nuts, berries and pheasant birds as far as from the surrounding countryside. If you need to mod a trailer, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire the A-Team. Folks, nice big project for you today. Um, not in how technical it is, but in it's actually the biggest thing that I've worked on today. Um, I was having a chat with our neighbours last summer about the likelihood that we'd be getting a tow bar on the car and a, a trailer to convert into something more useful for bigger trips. A few days later, there's a knock on the door, and they stood there offering us their camping trailer that he never used. Just, it's unbelievable how generous people can be sometimes. Um, so, Jill and Gareth, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to renovate and modify the trailer. Um, I hope you enjoy this project and I just want you to know that it's going to get a very well used and outdoorsy life. Thank you very much. Cheers. And here it is. It's an early 122, fully galvanised with a hinged hard top and a drop tailgate. Very nice. There's a couple of things that need doing to make it serviceable, just a bit of TLC really, so it shouldn't take too long to bring it back to life. What makes it project worthy though is a few extras I want to personalise it with. Um, I'm going to tackle the project in two stages, fix and finish. The fix portion is essentially to make it legal and get it repaired and back on the road. And the finish is to include some kit and ideas I've been considering. They're not major things, just a few changes to make it more useful. The bare minimum I need to do to make it road worthy and legal is clean and lubricate the tow hitch. Get one of the tyres resealed and inflated and stick a number plate on the back. The tow it just needs a brush, a squirt of WD-40 and some grease. Getting the wheel sorted is going to cost 12 quid and I already had the reflective vinyl so I bought the registration digits off eBay for about 3 quid and made my own trailer plate. To complete the fix properly though I'm also going to zip tie the light cables up out of harm's way, reattach the amber side reflectors with some double sided sticky foam, straighten the bent mud guard, reshape the bent 7 pin plug holder, reattach the tipper bar locking pin chain, secure the lid hinges to the body with 3 quids worth of new bolts and nylock nuts and replace the old keyless rusty locks with nice new shiny ones. These are pin A locks, same as the original early supplied ones, £16 from eBay. Before I do any of that though, the whole thing gets a wash and brush up to make it factory fresh again. Oh, Robert Duffy, you're the one. You make bath time lots of fun. Robert Duffy, I'm awfully fond of you. Bo, 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 yo. Robert Duffy, joy of joy. When I squeeze you, you make noise. Robert Duffy, you're my very best friend, it's true. Well, jet washers are my new favourite toy. It just um, it ate through years of being stored outdoors. That's uh, pretty much showroom condition again now. Now we've got a clean slate to work with, it's time to get on with the fix. Slight change to the tyre part of the fix. The uh, the deflated one was too badly perished to be road safe, so the one you saw being sorted in the workshop was a new replacement. I had to spend a little more than the expected 12 quid, but a new tyre and inner tube sealed and inflated was only 24 quid. So uh, so peanuts really when you consider the additional safety and reliability it provides. The trailer is going to be under constant load, so it's probably worth investing in a good set of running gear. The tyre wasn't the only part of the fix that didn't go quite according to plan. 
I had a proper look at the electrics and as well as some damage to the main cable itself when I took the plug apart to give the contacts a clean I discovered that a couple of the wires had corroded off their solder points because the whole thing was crammed full of mud and slugs. Long story short I bought a second hand wiring loom off eBay for 20 quid to replace the whole thing. A brand new loom is anywhere from 40 to 60 quid so although it's bumped up the cost of the renovation a little I've got a good deal and some extra peace of mind. I just need something to connect it to now. I've been driving in my car I'd like to say a huge thank you to John at JP Jones Tow Bar and Trailer Fitters for wiring it in for me. Um, he charged 20 quid to wire it in and considering I'd had three quotes of, uh, what was it, 60, 80 and 175 quid to get it connected, not even the tow bar put on, just wired up, he deserves uh, all the thanks and recommendations I can give. Cheers, top man. I was so chuffed with the deal that I got fit in the tow bar electrics that I got the other wheel done. So uh, both of the road wheels are now brand new and road safe and I'm going to keep the tyre from the, the good side and use that as a spare. To run the wiring down the tow bar you have to actually take this tow hitch section off via these bolts so before I go to that extent I'm going to just plug the wiring in and make sure the light clusters work. Right, time for the moment of truth. Um, could you put the lights on please? Brakes? And again? Yeah. Um, hazards? Left and right indicators. Lovely, thank you. One trailer back on the road and ready to roll. It's not been the cheapest project I've ever done by any means but um, I've shaved off a lot of the cost by being patient, taking my time and finding the good deals. £48 for two new tyres and tubes, £3 for number plate stickers, £20 for a used wiring loom, £3 for a handful of nuts and bolts and £16 for a pair of replacement locks. So final price for the fix 90 quid. They were the towing vehicle cost to consider of course but they were very reasonable too. £45 for a second hand tow bar and 20 quid to get it wired in and even with those added it only comes to a total of £155. Not bad. Time to get on with the fun stuff now, the finish. Um, I did have to buy a few of the components but most of what I'm going to use I either already had or was scrap metal that cost nothing. Let's get on with it then shall we? It is great having a drop tailgate for access, but what if you could turn it into something even more usable, like say, a work surface? And what if you could do that with just a couple of old gazebo poles and fittings, and some nuts and bolts, and two rubber feet?
Have a break. Have a Kit Kat. Couple of tall bins and an electrics box next. Provide a bit of anti-vibration protection between the ammo can and the mud guard. I've cut out a piece of sleeping mat and punched holes in it to accommodate the bolts. Hopefully once everything's crimped up this will cut out any final road shape between the two. I want the trailer to be equipped for supplying power so I'm installing this dedicated electrics box to wire in a voltage regulator and for somewhere to keep the necessary bits and bobs like sockets and cables. That's the second bracket built for the electrics box. I'm going to use it with a spare wheel holder that I bought to attach the box to the trailer drawbar. Racks for the lid next. It's amazing what you can do with a couple of old table frames. As you can see, it's not quite wide enough. It's got to go on these runners here. So what I need to do is extend this by 10 centimeters. There's all the pieces prepared, time to put the jigsaw together. It's been very cool to see the design I'd imagined appear from out of a pile of scrap metal. All they need now is the weld smoothing off with a flapper disc, a couple of coats of paint and a bit of prep on the trailer lid, then I can bolt them on.
as a trailer itself, Jill and Gareth gave us an electrical hookup which has a loose socket. So uh, I've had it apart and I'm going to have a quick look. Each plug has two nut and washer sets to secure them and on the top plug, one was rattling about inside and the other one was missing completely. So I'm going to uh, put on a replacement which is there and uh, tighten them back up and it'll be good to go. Okay, all tightened up, no loose plugs. Um, all the flaps and the switches work. So it's all serviceable now. The only extra thing I had to do was the threads stripped out in that hole, so I put a wider self tapper in to uh, to keep it tight. All done, ready to go. That's it kitted out for 12 volt and mains voltage then. Best of both worlds, depending on what we're doing and where we're doing it. I've included lights and multi socket, variable voltage option and chargers for the 12 volt system, and the mains is nice and simple, just the electric hookup. And I've not even broken out the MOD hand generator yet. That can be another project for another day. Part of the plan for the trailer is so I can use it as a market stall so I can pitch up at uh, country fairs and uh, county shows and places like that. And for that I'm going to need one of these but because it's so enormous it's about um, 10 metres by 10 or 11 by 11. Uh, what I need to do first is lay it out and resize it. And because that needs quite a lot of space thankfully one of the perks of my job is a huge great flat gym floor. The only thing is patriotic is the old red, white, and blue. It's green and gray and black and brown and tan all old and too. Camouflage, camouflage, camouflage. Designed by Mother Nature and by God. It's camouflage, camouflage. You're my favorite color, camouflage. And there you have it, a giant 13 metre by 11 metre scrim net, all cut up into little bits. Um, I was an LGV driver in the army, towing a JCB on exercises and that. And uh, it makes me feel sick to the bottom of my stomach having to cut up a scrim net like this. But as long as you've got purposes for all the bits, I suppose it's okay. The biggest bit I've done at 11 by 6 metres, and that's going to be for the stall. I've done a little 3 metre by 1 metre off cut as a backdrop for photographing my products. Two big sections at three and a half by three and a half metres, which I'm going to sell. So what's in store for this last long thin piece then? Well, aside from the fact it needs a bit of stitching to repair some holes, I've resized some bendy poles that I had and made some ground sockets. So uh, when that's all together and I've got a decent framework, I've got a nice shooting hide. Folks, project complete. A lot of work, but well worth it. The uh, the final cost for the finish were ten pound for the ammo boxes. Um, I got older six for twenty quid, so three for a tenner for use on the trailer. Seven fifty for the spare wheel holder from eBay with free postage. Fifteen pound for spray paint. Ten cans of grey primer from B and M at one fifty each, so fifteen quid. Six pound for nuts and bolts. Three for the nylocks and three for the bolts. And whiskey for the welding job. My neighbour very kindly did the welding for me and he said he'd like a bit of uh, Jack Daniels honey for his part in the project so the cost of some whiskey needs to be added on but the gazebo poles, table frames and ground sockets were all scrap metal and didn't cost anything. The bendy poles were the same deal, they were left over from an old tent and even the camo netting was free because I'm selling two three and a half by three and a half metre sections of, the, of a larger net for just enough to make my money back and that way I get a tidy stall cover for nothing. Um, I haven't even had to shell out for the solar panels and 12 volt accessories as I bought them years ago for our family camping outfit. Although they did cost something originally, for the purposes of this project I'm sticking them under the head in stuff I already had lying around. And the project's final expense, a nice piece of checker plate for the luggage rack. My neighbour Ben works at a metal fabricators and sorted this out for me. Cut to size, deburred and delivered to the door, 15 quid. Cheers fella, you're an absolute star mate. Total price for the finish then, 53.50 plus whiskey. Happy boy. I'm off out now for a spot of practice to set the uh, camo net up. Um, up to now it's only been a design on paper so I need to get it up and tested. I'm pretty sure it'll work fine but the last thing I need is to get somewhere and realise something's broken or missing or just doesn't work. So the testing stage is quite important.
Here we are then, Canal Central in Macebury Marsh on the Macebury stretch of the Montgomery Canal near Oswestry in Shropshire. Homemade food, campsite, canoe hire and home of the September Macebury Canal Fair which we've been to twice, two years in a row now. It's a very relaxed spot this, if you're looking for a small chilled site then this place is definitely there. Also home to Cracker the Boat Horse and Holtz Drawn Canal Boat Trips with Bywater Cruises. This is Raymond, Help! the sight dog. Hello Help! boy, you alright? Right. Ready. <laughs> He's quick, isn't he? He's quick. Tell her. Framework done according to plan, not too shoddy. Just to demonstrate why it's so important to test out these new projects, I've turned up to the uh, site without my Velcro securing strap. So, Ian, the owner here, uh, has very kindly supplied a load of bright orange zip ties. That is a thing of beauty to behold, and all for the bargain price of £208.50. Um, at first it sounds a lot, but when you consider the price includes the tow bar for the motor and replacement tyres and tubes on the trailer, which are consumables anyway, I don't think it's too steep for such a useful bit of kit. I've added in a, a last safety feature as well. Um, I put on the lid strap, which is all well and good for making sure the lid doesn't snap off its hinges or damage all the work on top. But if there's a big gust of wind and the lid blows that way and you're leaning in it, getting something out, you're going to get fairly damaged. So I put in these support struts. Um, I had a couple of um, weird rod things with brackets attached to them and they're, they're, they're opposites, they're left and right, so that was quite handy. But then I noticed there was two holes pre-drilled into the trailer uh, lid. So now it's got um, two safety supports as well for when you're getting stuff in and out of it. And with that last safety element added, that is a wrap. Project complete. I think it's only fitting that I toasted people that made it all possible. So here's to Jill and Gareth, without whose generous gift none of this would have been put together. Uh, John for his help with the tow bar and electrics. Andy for the welding. And Ben for the awesome checker plate finishing touch. Royalty. Every last one here. You're very good health. Until the next time, thanks for watching and get out there. <laughs>